Okay, so the other day I told you guys about the two locations that I have found so far that are closest to each other. And that of course made people wonder about which two locations are farthest from each other. So guys, I had to figure it out. But before I go any further, I feel like I should mention that the two locations that I told you about last time in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania, are actually technically not the closest locations I've found so far. But I feel like there are some asterisks required for the ones that are actually closer, but I'll explain in a minute. Okay, so I needed a methodical approach for figuring out which pair of locations were farthest from each other. I knew that one approach to doing this would be to calculate a distance matrix for all the places I found so far. Bro, what's a distance matrix? Good question, Chad. A distance matrix is just a fancy name for a table that lists all the distances between the pairs of locations in a known set of locations. So if you had four locations, you'd put together a four by four grid like this, and then you'd fill in the distances between each pair. As you may have realized, you really only need to fill in half of this matrix because the pairs are mirrored and repeated across a diagonal here. And since the distance from point A to point B is the same as the distance from B to A, we can just calculate that one time for each pair. Also, the distance values along the diagonal will always be zero and don't need to be calculated because there's no sense calculating the distance from any point to itself. Once you have your distance matrix, you can look across all the values to find the maximum distance. Okay, so if I create a distance matrix for all the locations I've found so far, I should be able to find the pair that are farthest from each other. Now guys, I actually tried to do this months ago when I first created my custom formula to calculate the distance between any two locations. I figured I could just make a big table in my spreadsheet and paste that formula in. And logically, that works just fine. But here's the thing. I've found over 400 locations so far, so the matrix for that would be really, really big. Let's just pretend it's 400 locations for a second to make the numbers easy to work with. A 400 by 400 matrix has 160,000 cells in it. And even though, like I said, we don't have to calculate every one, we can skip the diagonals and only do half of the matrix, that's still almost 80,000 values to calculate. And when I tried to paste my custom formula into 80,000 cells in Google Sheets, I think my browser caught fire. Wait, really? No, not really. It really wasn't a good idea to try to execute all of those formulas at the same time. So that was silly, and even though it would be really nice to have a distance matrix that was dynamically updated in my spreadsheet every time I added a new location, that was probably going to be a real pig performance-wise. So as much as it pains me to say it, a spreadsheet wasn't the answer. But I knew that I could very easily do the distance matrix calculation by writing a script in something like Python. And the good news is I like writing code even more than I like making spreadsheets. So that's what I did. I exported all the location values from my spreadsheet as a delimited text file. Then I wrote a script to read it in, calculate the matrix, and tell me what I wanted to know. Okay, so before I reveal which two locations are farthest from each other, I want to set the record straight about the two closest locations. So when I was testing my script, I figured one way to test it would be to check what it thought the two closest locations were because I thought I knew that already. Except the two Chambersburg locations did not come up as the closest pair. They weren't even the second closest pair. Initially, I thought my script was broken, but when I looked at it more closely, I realized that I just made a mistake. I had relied too much on my memory for which locations were close to each other, and I hadn't really gone through it very carefully. But a methodical approach reveals the following. Technically, the two closest locations that I have found are in Nairobi, Kenya. But I'm going to put an asterisk next to this one, guys, because those two locations were videos sent in to me by the same person. The first one was a location I did in Season 1, Episode 143, but they had actually sent me another video that was super easy that I included in Lightning Round 9. Anyway, they're super close to each other, like 354 feet or 108 meters apart, practically on top of each other. And guys, the second closest pair is a similar situation. I got two videos from someone in Garden City, Kansas, that I actually included in the same video, Season 1, Episode 124. Those are about 641 feet or 195 meters from each other, so just a bit closer than the ones in Chambersburg. But again, I'm going to put an asterisk next to that one because they were from the same person. So technically, Chambersburg is the third closest pair, but the closest that were not submitted by the same person. And guys, real quick, there's one other set of locations that are very close to each other in Richmond, Virginia, but they're not quite as close as the Chambersburg locations. They're about 730 feet or 223 meters from each other. By the way, my apologies to some of the people who asked about the Richmond locations in the comments. I responded too quickly and told some of you that I thought they were closer than the Chambersburg locations, but they're not. Okay, without further ado, let's get to the two farthest locations. The two locations I have found so far that are farthest from each other are the ones that I did in Season 2, Episode 35, in Sant Antonio de Portmani, Spain, and one of the locations that I found during the New Year's Day live stream that I did, and that was in Brightwater, New Zealand. Those two locations are 11,975 miles from each other. That's 19,267 kilometers. Now you might look at that map and say, well, surely places that you found in Northern Europe would be farther. But guys, this is where we can really see the inherent issues of trying to use a flat map to represent a round Earth. This map is a Mercator projection, so the latitudes farther away from the equator are distorted and appear larger. In fact, the way the red line is drawn on this map is not even accurate, because a true straight line between these two points would actually look like this on a flat map, I know that looks crazy, but the only way to properly visualize this is on a globe. So I rendered the same line in Google Earth to illustrate that it is, in fact, a straight line and it is the shortest distance between these two points. On the surface, anyway. 
Guys, the distance between these two places is almost the farthest that two points can be from each other on the surface of the Earth. The maximum distance that two locations on the Earth's surface can be from each other is 12,450 miles, approximately. That's a little more than 20,000 kilometers. And that's because that is roughly half of the Earth's circumference. And two points on the Earth's surface cannot be considered to be farther apart than that, because if they were, you could just turn around and go the other direction around the planet and it would be closer. So these two points are 11,975 miles apart, which is like 96% of that maximum distance. So we've got a little bit of room to go here before we hit the maximum distance, but not much. Okay guys, that's it. I hope this was interesting for you. I know it's not my usual content, but I really like figuring this stuff out and explaining it to you. I will have a new geolocation for you very soon.